Good morning. How are you doing? So, uh, just between coats at the moment, thought I'd make a little video regarding what Jesus said about what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom. I think that a lot of people miss this. You know, it's like, oh yes, of course I do that anyway, and then gloss over it and move on. Whereas actually what I've seen in my 17 years, uh, I guess working with other Christians in churches and whatever, is that, um, well, let's start here. The greatest among you will be a servant. Those are Jesus's words. Why is that devastating though? I think it's devastating because we like to think that we serve, but we like to do it in our own way. And actually, service is um, humiliating sometimes. Um, it might not be something you want to do if you're serving the living God and he wants you to go and approach someone and talk to them about sin, for example. And that, you know, uh, makes your flesh cruel and you uh, struggle with that and you're sweating for weeks over it. And like I have done in the past, by the way, I'm talking from personal experience, uh, you know, if you don't do it, have you actually done what the Lord wanted you to do? Have you been the servant you were required to be? Um, I don't think that it's um, quite as cut and dry or as straightforward as people like to think it is. Um, because of pride, ironically, a lot of people think, yes, I'm a servant. I do servantal things and I'm a, I, I like to be a servant in my church and, you know, hand out cups of tea and talk to the homeless or whatever, all of that's fine. All of that is part of it. Um, I think it's deeper than that. I think it's um, more humbling as well than we like to make out. Um, for example, who doesn't love to want to be noticed, um, whether you're praying, uh, whether you're serving tea or whatever, there's always something, I think, unless you are in check and walking with his spirit, you're you're examining yourself, where there is this element that, yeah, God owes me one, basically. I am a servant. I am doing this. I'm owed something. That's not the attitude of, a, of the servant that, in my opinion, will be the greatest. Often, you will never have heard, I think, of on that day when we are all judged, many who were the greatest servants. They're, they'll be totally unknown to the rest of the world, probably. Like I lit probably literally have never even heard of them. No one even knew about what they were doing, maybe. It, it, it's so humble uh, to be um, of that kind of servant that the Lord is expecting, in my opinion, at least, that to be in the mind of like uh, lots of people, uh, unless you have specifically called to be there, being called to be there, probably like a lot of people won't know you. And if they do, they're going to hate you. Like Jesus said, if they hated me, you who are serving me, they're going to hate as well. And I mean, that's another devastating thing, isn't it? It's devastating to be his servant because you will share in his uh, earthly fate, basically crucifixion, of whatever that looks like for you or me or whatever else. All who are, you know, trying to live a godly life in Christ Jesus at some point will be persecuted. It's a, it's a promise. You will be persecuted. You will be hated. Everybody will reject you. So I guess the implication is, if that's not really happening, are you really serving him? Um, of course, he is very merciful and, you know, it's not always that we are immediately hated. We have to also, you know, love and serve our fellow human beings who are not in Christ, if you know what I mean, and have a good reputation and things like that. Whereas I think that, to be honest with you, uh, a lot of people really don't want to be hated. I don't want to be hated. Do you want to be hated? Nobody wants to be hated. I don't even think Jesus wanted to, be, wanted to be hated. He wanted to be received by his people. He was the king of the Jews, as they called him, right? Um, but not. It, it was kind of ironic that uh, he was given that because he was given that title by the Romans and the Jews rejected that. Um, 
nevertheless, he really is the king of the Jews. And that was a proper title, right? But people who want to serve him uh, in, in spirit and truth, uh, you know, have to admit that, you know, they have to go that same way, which is the, at the foot of the cross. So the greatest among us will be a servant. Um, and those servants you've probably never even heard about, really. So, you know, there will be people will on that day will be admiring like, wow, what, what incredible humility, what incredible sacrifice. Of course, they deserve to be at the right hand of, of the, the father along with, uh, you know, on the left and the right hand of Jesus, you know. Um, incredible that, you know, Jesus said such a devastating thing because I think most people will be like, yes, I'm going to be the greatest. I mean, we should strive to be the greatest. Don't, don't get me wrong, but we have to understand what it, first of all, what it means to be a servant. And second of all, what kind of servitude takes you to be the greatest? And do we call ourselves the greatest? Like, are, are we serving so that we are literally like, oh, yes, I understand myself to be the greatest servant here. No, it's a, it's a, it will be uh, a designated um, accolade, I guess, from the Lord himself as he recognizes your works for him, how much you actually listened to him, how much of the chastising you received, because, you know, if you're loved by the Lord, you will be chastised. If you're loved as a son, you will be chastised. And the chastisement is you need to come out of agreement with the evil spirits that dwell in your flesh, same as me. And that is the road to sanctification, and that is the road to holiness. And the, the closer you get to holiness, the more aware of sin you are in yourself and other people. It's not just other people. You don't look at other people and go, look how sinful they are. You know, I'm glad I'm not like that anymore. No. John 3 tells us, if you come into the light, you know, you show others, others your weaknesses, what you, you know, what you, you struggle with. Uh, that's also a humiliating thing, and I think that's part of what it means to be a servant, is not only examining yourself on a daily basis, struggling along with everybody else about the spirits that you personally have, according to the, 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 the lusts of your particular flesh, you know, what you've succumbed to in the past and now has a stronghold in you, but also that you can help discern the spirits and help other people understand that. But you don't get any credit for that unless the Lord decides to give you credit as a servant who was among the greatest. And that's my definition of that. You can disagree if you want. I'd love to hear your definition of what it means to be a servant in the body of Christ. For me, that's a major part of it, is about how we have combated evil spirits uh, within our own sphere of existence, whether it's in your own flesh or helping other people recognize it in theirs, and also ministering deliverance which is the you know the flip side or the other side of the coin of healing i would say a lot of healing often comes with deliverance there are spirits of infirmity for example uh, and often the, those spirits of infirmity have their stronghold uh, because of uh, an agreement somewhere with darkness um, read that passage after what well, let's say john three eighteen to 21 something like that include yourself in that even if you've been a believer for years and years and years you as well as me, need to consider this every day. You know, that's part of the examination. But I want you to be the greatest. I, I would be pr proud and happy to see you, you who is watching this, as the greatest servant that the Lord has said is the greatest servant. Praise the Lord. The greatest among you will be a servant. Let's, be, let's try and outdo each other in servitude, right? And, and, and exhort each other what it means to be a servant telling people what it when they go wrong when pride has taken control because you cannot be a proud servant you cannot be a violent servant you cannot be a drunkard servant you know there is an element of holiness that always needs to be met when you are serving the lord because we represent him and if we are not representing him well that's going to bode badly for us right so have a very blessed day hope that encourages you it's a devastating thing Everything Jesus said was devastating. So, you know, this is going to be a long series. This is what I've realized now, 
having embarked on this series is like, okay, literally just going to have to go through everything Jesus said. So, you know, until the Lord comes back and until I've been through everything he said, including in Revelation, by the way, because that's the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Even though it's through the prophet John, his disciples, beloved, those are his words too. So there's a lot more to come. I hope that you are getting something from this series. And anyway, God bless you. Peace.